Hello, everybody. I'm here to talk to you about the human internet karyotyping activity. And I hope that you uh, watch the karyotyping notes. That will help explain some of this that's going on here. Uh, so if you remember, a karyotype is basically a picture of the chromosomes of a particular person. Uh, so the introduction there basically talks what is a normal karyotype and how you can tell whether somebody's male or female. And it shows you the normal one here. And as you get done reading it, you'll have uh, three pre-lab questions that were based on all the above information. And again, you may actually know those answers if you watch the uh, notes. Now keep in mind, when you're looking at a karyotype, we're looking at these large, wound up uh, pieces of DNA and protein that make a uh, chromosome. We can't look at the individual bases on the DNA. That's impossible. We're just looking to see that the uh, chromosomes are correctly uh, aligned. They're not broken. Pieces of them aren't attached to other parts of the chromosome. Uh, we're also looking to make sure that there's two of each and no more than two of each. So uh, that's the point of the karyotype. That's what we're actually looking at. And if there's extra pieces, stuff missing, uh, that can lead to different birth defects. So uh, read that, answer these three questions, and then go to the following website, which is here. And uh, basically, the first part is just an introduction. So you'll read about that, and when you get done, you'll go to the patient histories that's sitting here. So we'll click on that, and it talks about patient A, and then you'll look at uh, patient A's karyotype. I would point out that this is this is from her baby. They're talking about fetal epithelial cells. So they're getting the baby's DNA, not the actual patient. It's the patient's baby. She's pregnant. All right. So what you have here is the patient's karyotype. Now you'll notice that there's some of these chromosome numbers are in blue. That's because uh, the karyotype's not complete yet. You notice here on the uh, left hand side, there's a chromosome there. So you're going to basically match the chromosome with the missing chromosomes here. So you can see this one's really big. Uh, the higher the number, the bigger they are. So I'm going to say that's number two. So I click on number two and then it puts it in place. So you keep going till you get it all done. And you get it filled out. And uh, so you'll need to do that. Uh, so I'll just do that real quick here. Uh, and when you're finished, it will then come up to this screen saying, congratulations, you've done the karyotype. So it talks about how you interpret a karyotype. Again, I kind of talked about that with uh, the notes. Um, these are particular diagnoses if you've got some problems here. So they're only going to do three different abnormalities. There's more than that, but they're only going to talk about three. So they're going to talk about Klinefelter's, which you have extra sex chromosomes here. So it'll be an XXY. They'll talk about Down syndrome, which is an extra 21. And then they'll talk about trisomy 18. And uh, so those are the only ones we'll be looking at here. But we scroll down here to the karyotype, and there's what we have. If we go back to the assignment now, the first question asks, what's the diploid number? Uh, for some reason, a lot of people have problems with figuring out the diploid number. I don't know why that is. To figure out the diploid number of a karyotype, we just count the chromosomes. So you literally go one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you go and just count every chromosome until you get down to here. Then you go back to the paper and you type that number in that spot. That's all you got to do. Now, if it's not normal, if it doesn't have 46 chromosomes, if it's got more or less, then you have a problem. And the process that's responsible is the same one in every case. And I think it's listed up here. 
Again, it's right here. It's talked about non-disjunction. The chromosomes did not separate properly. That's going to be the case in every case. Uh, what the sex of the baby is, well, you go back to the karyotype, go to the XX, XY, determine if that's XX or XY. If it's XX, it's a girl. If it's XY, it's a male or a boy. And you will type that, what's the sex of the baby there? And then tell me why. So you're going to tell me, well, it's two X's, so therefore it's a girl. Or if there's a Y chromosome, it doesn't matter what else it has. If there's a Y chromosome, it's going to be a boy. Now, is there a disorder? So again, you go back to the karyotype. If uh, everything has two of each, then everything's fine. And your answer would be no, there's no disorder. But if there's more than two, and I'll give you a hint, there's going to be more than two. You're going to say, um, well, there is uh, too many of this chromosome. So whatever there's more of, write down that chromosome. Um, what does that lead to? Well, we can go back to the karyotype, scroll up here to the table here, and find out which syndrome we're talking about by seeing what it lines up with. So you'll know the syndrome. And then it says, predict how the disorder could impact the baby. Um, where are you going to find that information? Well, that's where the power of the internet comes to your rescue. Just look up the particular disorder, write down a couple of things that that disorder will do to that particular baby, and that answers your question. Uh, when you're done with that, you will go to patient B. So you'll find these tabs, patient B, and then you get another one and you just start over. So that's how this activity is done. Shouldn't take you too long. Probably no more, no longer than it took you to uh, watch this video. Should be an easy activity. Get it done. Make sure you submit it. And again, this form is found on Google Classroom.